Hi everyone, my name is Adelicia. Everyone calls me me. My dad is the one that's usually smoking y'all's meat. And my mom is the one that gets everyone hyped up at a bridal shower or something like that. Um, I was raised um, at Cornerstone, so I've been attending this church since I was three years old. Um, I was practically raised at church. So um, growing up, I thought I was a good kid. Um, I was judging myself through the both sides. So um, I respected my parents, I read my Bible, I prayed almost every day, and I took notes every week after a lesson from church. I always dressed as modestly as I could, and I didn't get into too many fights, and I thought I knew most of everything about the Bible. Whenever I would witness someone disrespect their parents or something immodest, I think, thank God I'm not like them. But at that time, I didn't realize that apart from Christ, I was exactly like it. So um, if I did anything closely to some Anything close to spiritual, I didn't do it because I wanted to. I did it because my parents always said to, and if I didn't, I was going to get beat. Um, <laughs> so I, Sundays, I paid attention, and it wasn't because I wanted to please God. I just wanted to make my parents happy so I could go on with my life. <laughs> Living with strict parents, you're going to have desires of your own. You're not always going to want to do what they say. Um, you're not always going to wear what they tell you to wear, and you're not going to want to talk to the people they want you to talk to. Of course, I obeyed the rules for the most part, and sometimes I slip up and disobey, then I lie to cover it up. But overall, I obeyed. I didn't do it because I had a fear of God, but a fear of my parents. Um, I knew I wasn't good with God, and I definitely knew, definitely knew I wasn't a Christian. I didn't understand why, but um, my pride wouldn't um, let me ask for help. So, um, Sunday after Sunday, from the children's room to the sanctuary, I heard about being broken over sin, and living a life to please him, but I didn't quite understand it. Because I was prideful, I thought I knew everything, but um, it wasn't until I was 16 and a half that I um, let my pride down and finally went and talked to my dad. My father and I have something that we call kitchen talks, so it's when he's preparing his meat for Saturday and we just get in the kitchen and talk about whatever is on our mind. Um, I remember asking him if someone has to be perfect to be saved or what they had to do to be saved. I already knew that someone didn't have to be perfect and I knew they couldn't do anything themselves. Yet I found myself asking because to be honest, I did not know anything. He told me that we can't do anything to be saved. He saves us if he wants to do it so for his glory. And with that answer, I battled, for, I battled with it for weeks, if not months, over and over again. I asked myself questions like, if God knew all things, why would he create someone if he knew they would only end up rejecting him and going to hell? Or, I didn't ask to be created, so why would he sentence me to a life like that? Um, I blamed God for creating people, just to send me to hell, and I hated him for creating me and condemning me to his life, where I actually have to pick to live an even more strict life than I already had. I hated re reading Romans 9.21, has the pot and a right over the clay to make out of the same lump of one vessel for honorable use and the another for dishonorable use. I would always say that God wasn't really good if we don't just make people that want to live their life for him. It seems wrong of him to have to send people be made to burn forever because that was not good. Um, these thoughts bothered me over almost every day and they only got worse every Sunday when all those things I told myself were always refuted each Sunday, sermon after sermon, and I knew my train of thinking was off, but I just didn't know why. So I was scared of dying and going before God, knowing I was going to hell and not understanding him to make things right or how to live my life for him. So my little sister Mary, we share a room and she was like, why aren't you asleep yet? And I was battling with all these thoughts and she was just like, why don't you do what our parents are tell us to go pray about it? So um, I prayed about it and asked for guidance. I asked him to show me what I needed to know. I prayed for days about it and not because someone told me to, because I genuinely had a hunger to know how I was wrong and how he could forgive me. Um, funny enough, a couple weeks later, there was a sermon I heard on free will. I don't remember how I came across it, but it was evident that God had answered my prayers. And to, after listening to the sermon, I understood that God had put in me a heart that wanted to serve him. I understood that apart from God, my heart was far from him. And if he had not put it in me to rely on him and him alone, I would have been dead in my sin. He did not want his people to sin. He wanted them to serve him as their savior. But a godly man in their righteousness suppressed the truth and they disobeyed and that was not his fault at all. After 
after that, um, I remember my mom um, told me to read Titus 3, 5 through 7. He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of the by the washing of your generation and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us graciously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Which is now my favorite verse to go through whenever I battle with assurance. I can never do anything in myself to be saved, but come to him so that he will cleanse me of my sin. I had a mediator because Christ died for me, and I still wonder why I would ever put my faith in my works when I under finally understood this truth. Um, from that time, the Lord in his mercy gave me a heart that wanted to do him, and not anyone else but him. Yes, I could obey my parents, but I didn't do it because I'd get into trouble if I didn't. I did it because it's what God commanded me to do. If I'm not living a life to please him, then nothing separates me from the people that oh, disobey their parents. Nothing separates me from the people of this world besides Christ. And um, to the, especially to the younger ones here, um, we are blessed beyond measures to be a part of this church. From when we are young, we are being taught the gospel. So there's no room for you to say that you did not know, especially if you are in this church. We may not be coming to church, but there's a lot of people here that reach out to us kids. And especially with the sermons that have been going on now, don't reject Revelation. Yeah, I know. Um, um, and just to all the parents out there, thank you all so much for all your prayers. They do help. Even though um, it may not seem like it at first, I didn't think I would be standing here. I thought I would be out of college. I wouldn't be here anymore. But here I am on the other side of this mic. Greatest of the Lord, we're all of you. Thank you all so much. I love to see our kids. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And uh, it's been a tremendous joy to see the Lord work in that way in our church. Amen. And so, um, <laughs> I'm so excited about, and it's been a, amazing to me to have the conversations and uh, um, to hear those testimonies is just uh, yes. amazing to me. Amen. That's the Lord at work. So, Amen. very, very, very grateful for what the Lord has done here uh, with respect to these that have come. And Nini, it's our joy to uh, baptize her today. Uh, based upon her profession of faith in Jesus Christ, um, you heard her, her testimony to serve the Lord here, which we're very grateful for. Yes. It's a joy, sister, to baptize. It's called her sister. It's a joy Amen. Amen. to baptize her in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Made with Christ in baptism. All the way. All the way. 